Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Balkan. Today I'm doing a tutorial on how to paint a Word Birders Chaos Space Marine. If you'd like to support the channel, our Coffee and Patreon page is linked below. Now onto the video. So this is the finished Word Birder that we're going to be working on today. It's also going to have the chapter badge on a separate video on Sunday, but there will be parts of it to show what colours are used in this video. But the full thing for the chapter badge will be on Sunday. So for the start colour, we're going to use Citadel Corn Red. Frustratingly, I should have used the Word Birders Red here, but the overall effect is much the same. Once you've finished all the other colours and the highlights to it, you can still get that same Word Birders colour. So Corn Red or Word Birders Red, either or, will work quite effectively for this. Now we're going to use some Citadel Rakar Flesh. We're going to use this for all the bony parts and the cloth that's hanging down from his waist. We're going to do some runes on that a little bit later. And little bits that you'd expect the word birders to have down the front of the tabard there. We want to get all the little bone parts, like the sections on his helm. You tend to find those little claws protruding from the armour. And also the sections on his power pack on the back too. Now we're going to use some Citadel Bane Blade Brown. We're going to use this to do the pouches and belt that he's got about his person. So give them a nice coat of Bane Blade Brown. And once we start adding the contrast onto them, we can get them that lovely leathery looking colour. Gonna use some Citadel Iron Hand Steel here. You could use Iron Hand Steel or Lead Belcher. Any kind of dark silvery metallic is fine. Try to get the good coverage on it. We're gonna use this to paint up all of the metallic parts. So you've got parts on the bolt pistol and chainsaw. Then some of them have these kind of harnesses going across the front there. As long as you get them all silvery metallic, you can't go wrong. For any gold parts, we're going to use Citadel Retributor Armour. This is a lovely colour, gives really good coverage. So you usually only need one coat of this. It's really, really nice paint, I think. We want to go over all of the little chaos icons and things like that, just to make them stand out against the silver and the red. I'm going to start shading now using Citadel Seraphim Sepia on the tabard at the front and then all of the bone spurs and things like that. I've also done that little kind of cloth that's strapped around his leg there, holding on the holster. I've done that as though it's made of a similar kind of cloth to the tabard as well, maybe he's torn a strip off. Held it on there, we'll give them a nice coat of Seraphim Sepia and we can move on to the next colour. We now have Citadel Agraxair Shade. We're going to use this to paint over all of the Retributor armour. Retributor armour will be darkened by the shade. It gets in those recesses. And once you start reapplying those golden colours, you will get a nice gold effect on that. Next colour we're going to use is Citadel Contrast Snakebite Leather. We're going to be using this on the pouches and the belt. This gives them a lovely kind of tan leather colour. So once you've got this on, we start highlighting that a little bit later. You'll see that leathery colour really coming through. Give it that nice scuffed appearance that you can get. So 
Now we're going to use some Citadel Carrowberg Crimson. I'm going to use this on the red armour. As I say, if you used Word Bearer's Red, then that is just as good when you put the Carrowberg Crimson on. So either or, they are slightly different, but it's not too noticeable to be honest. The overall effect is the one that you see at that little rotating video at the very start of this one. Final shade is going to be Citadel Nuln Oil. We are going to use this on all of the silvery metallic parts. Give that a good coat so you get all those details standing out, and we can start reapplying the colours. First colour we're going to use is Citadel Corn Red. So we're going to start reapplying this colour over the Carrowberg Crimson. It gives it that nice dark edging where the shade is in the recesses and the lighter corn red in the areas where it'd be catching the light. So if you imagine the light coming down from above, you want to repaint the word bird as red or the corn red where that light is catching the miniature. the corn red done we're going to move on to Citadel Wasdaka red and start to highlight it. Now again like you did previously you want to make sure that you're only highlighting areas that will be catching the light and even then you don't want to be doing it all over the miniature just in certain parts to make that stand out so the bottom of his lower leg armour will be catching a fair bit of light so we are applying that quite a bit there so you've got that nice bright colour whereas the inside of the legs probably wouldn't even have any corn red will be quite darkly shaded. Finally we're going to use some Citadel Pink Horror. We're going to use this to do edge highlights just to bring out some of those details make them stand out. So I'm using a really thin brush here, it's the Army Painter Insane Detail Brush. I'm just picking out those edges on the battle plate to make those stand out. Once you've got this little pink highlight on it really does make them stand out, makes them look really really cool. Again, thinking about where the light's coming from, you only want to be highlighting the top edges or sometimes the bottom edges if they'd be catching the light more. Sometimes you can do the bottom edges too, but if you do too many of them, do every single edge, it does look a little bit like Tron. I'm going to return some colour to the metallics now using Citadel Iron Hand Steel. I wanted to make these quite shiny rather than leaving them shaded, so we're just going to apply a little bit of Iron Hand Steel back to them and get that silver metallic edging done to all the plate. I'm going to start with Citadel Rockarth Flesh again. I'm going to reapply the colour to all of the bone and also this tabard down the front here. We'll then jump and do all of the bone, then we will return to the tabard and do that shortly. We'll get a nice amount of Rakarth flesh back on, making sure you leave the shade in the recesses. That's where not much light will be getting to. do Citadel Ushabti bone to highlight all those bone sections. So the little bony kind of teeth or spikes that are coming out, we're going to do the end 50% of those with Ushabti bone. Then we're going to start highlighting the skulls, thinking about where the light will be catching the skulls. We're also going to do this with the skull on the back and any of those like bony protrusions from the top of the helmet, can't think what they'd be called. Almost like horns but not quite. We'll do the same with those as well, highlighting the areas that would catch the light. You can get some nice little effects going with that. Now the final highlight on the bone, we're going to use Citadel Screaming Skull. 
just give that a nice little highlight to each of those sections to make those stand out. So we're going to return to the tabard now using Citadel Ricard Flesh and then mix in some white. I'm using Vallejo white with this, but whichever white you've got is fine. And if you mix in a little bit of white, you'll be able to highlight that tabard or any cloth and get that to have some nice lighter areas. We'll be building this up with a couple of layers of this. So it's much like the army, you want to think about where the light is coming from and highlighting those areas a little bit more, top edges and that kind of thing, and the crests of any ridges and things like that on the tabard and the materials, the cloth. I'm going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix. I'm going to highlight them a little bit more. Each time you do this, you probably want to do about 50% less than you did on the previous layer, so that you have all those different layers of Ricard Flesh and then the Ricard Flesh and White mixes that you've been doing. So we're going to leave the tabard like that for now and we're going to start returning to the gold. So we're going to add Retributor Armour to the gold leaving the shade in the recesses and the underside of all those little spike bits too, so that you're only getting that highlight on the top edges. Now we're going to use some Citadel Liberator Gold and highlight the Retributor Armour. So you just want to be doing about 50% of the area that you covered with the previous layer, almost like edge highlights, but a little bit more, just to get that highlighting done on the gold and get it to really really stand out and finally for the gold we're going to add some Vallejo Modeler Chrome to the Liberator Gold and we are just going to do edge highlights on all of the gold just to make those really really stand out We're now going to use some Vallejo black, but whichever black you use is fine. We're just going to do all of the seals between the battle plate. You've also got the kind of body sections on the bolt pistol and the chainsaw too. We're also going to use this section just to do some of the detailing on that tabard. Now you'll see that in the next part. It's just some free-handed kind of runes and making it look like there's writing on that tabard. If you want to see a tutorial on that, sing out in the comments. Let me know and get one of those done, no problem. I'm going to start working on the leather belt and the pouches now using Sithel Ball or Brown. We're going to be doing the brush strokes at 90 degrees to the edge that you're painting. So on the horizontal, you want to be doing vertical brush strokes. On the verticals, you want to be doing horizontal brush strokes. Let's just get that rough edge on the leather belts and the pouches. Now I'm going to add some Citadel Ruckarth Flesh to the Balor Brown. We're just going to do some slight highlights onto the areas that we just scuffed up. I call them highlights, it's not really anything to do with highlighting, it's just to give it that look of having deeper scuffs, so you've got sort of like little superficial ones on the very edge of the leather, and then you have like slightly deeper ones where the lighter leather beneath is showing through, so it's more to do with that rather than highlighting itself, so if you think about it the way you'd scuff leather, get a lighter scuff and then darker scuffs and things like that, and it's just to do with that. I'm going to use Vallejo German Grey. We're going to highlight all of those black sections, so the seals between the armour, we're just going to pick out those highlights, and then we're going to 
highlight any bits which will be catching a light on the body of the chainsaw and the bolt pistol too. little quick layer here using Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. We're just going to use this to pick out the edges on the bolt pistol and the chainsaw to get them standing out a little bit more. Don't want to do this on the seals too much because if you leave the seals so they are highlighted with the German Grey it just looks like it's that sturdy kind of protective rubber that you get on seals and that kind of thing. Gonna try something a little bit different with the eye lenses on this chap. So we're gonna use a little bit of Vallejo white just to paint the eye on his knee and also the lenses in his helm. If you wanted to do his lenses just with normal paint, you could use Mook Green and then do a shade of BL Tan Green and then Mook Green and a few highlighted colours for that. What we're gonna to try today though is we're gonna use a little bit of Citadel Tesseract Glow Technical Paint, just paint that onto the eye lenses. And then we are going to use a tiny little bit of Vallejo white just to put a spot in the front of each lens. Now working on that little eye on the front knee pad there on the left leg. We are just going to use a little bit of Cassandora Yellow Shade to yellow that up. We are then going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Fugan Orange Shade just to go around the edges of that. Or on the under edge of it I should say, not right the way around. We're doing this like the Eye of Horus. So we'll next use a tiny little bit of Vallejo Black and just do an almost cat's eye shape there. That vertical line going down to a point from the top of the little eyepiece. Like that. So in order to do the chapter badge on the shoulder there, we're going to start with Vallejo White, but whichever white you use is fine. We're then going to paint on the rough outline of the kind of fire behind the demon's head. I'm going to first paint this on, it's slightly over to one side and I have to kind of shuffle it over, but it's no problem. As with any kind of freehand, you start doing it and get it slightly in the wrong place, you can just shuffle that across, extending some parts and painting over others. Just have a look at how it's going and then adjust it accordingly. So next we're going to use some Citadel Cassandora Yellow and just yellow up the sort of inner 80% of this fiery bit. We are then going to use Citadel Fugan Orange just to go around that yellow part and sort of into some of the bits of flame that are sticking out. Did try Carrowbird Crimson, but that didn't work too well, so we're just going to paint over that with Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. Just use a little bit of this just to make the edge of those flames a different red so that it doesn't blend in with the corn red. Give it more of an orangey red colour. All we need now is the little demon's head, so we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black just to paint the demon's head on there, get the horns and the shape of the face on.
Finally, we are going to tidy up that skull shape with a little bit of Vallejo white. And then we we'll then touch up using this previously used shade. So we're going to draw on the eyes too, two little spots for the nose, and then three long teeth going down to the bottom. Using a little bit of Vallejo black here just to touch this up. As I say, this whole process will be a video on Sunday for the Word Birders chapter badge. You can see here me editing the shape of that and getting it ready. So this is the finished Word Birders miniature. Really pleased with how it turned out, really like the red of the armour and also pretty pleased with that chapter badger on the shoulder too. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also think about subscribing to some of our other social media, link below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support me, my coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.